Bonjour, mon petit chou. And tonight we're doing something a little special. Reading some emails from our wonderful Pansy fans. So let's dig into the old virtual mailbag and see what you all have to say. <clears throat> Dear Dick, I know this might sound really forward, but are you currently single? Love you and your show. <laughs> oh, Frank, I'm touched, but I'm not single. In fact, I'm always a double. <laughs> Next email, Mr. Marlboro. I'm a longtime Pansy Vision fan. I've always wondered, are you gay, bi, or asexual? Your biggest fan, Jerry Tobias, Soda Springs, Idaho. <laughs> well, Jerry, I never kiss and tell. But if this is any hint, there was about a month back in 1978 where I was engaging an amorous congress with every single panelist on the match game. So please, keep those emails coming. We love them. Now, tonight, we have a rather unique episode. A TV show from the early days of Pansy Vision TV that was found in our tape vault. I'm sure some of our more seasoned audience members remember this one, The Sashaying Chef, a weekly cooking show that aired from 1973 until 1981. It was hosted by Claude St. Orange, a rather foul-tempered gourmand that was infamous for being fired from more Michelin star restaurants than any other chef in history. And Claude was sadly let go from this network in November of 81, after trying to set fire to the soundstage after someone complained about the quality of his tart au citron. <laughs> Some people are just so touchy. Another episode of the Sashay Chef. <laughs> I am, as always, your host, Claude Saint Laurent. <laughs> and do we have a marvelous show for you tonight? Outside of spending the weekend at the St. Mark Baths, I cannot think of anything more exciting than having a fondue party with good friends, chilled wine, crusty French bread, bubbling cheese, and a hearty side of disco biscuits. That will make you the talk of the town. Tonight, I'll be making my world famous Fire Island Fondue! But first, you must make sure you have your mise en place ready! Mise en place is basically a fancy French term for get your shit together! For this recipe, you'll need one clove of garlic, half one pound of grated Gruyere cheese, a half pound of Emmentaler cheese, or really any other kind of Swiss cheese. One cup of dry white wine, one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of cornstarch, and one teaspoon of lemon juice. Now, God help you if I catch you using that lemon juice in that tiny little yellow lemon plastic screw top. God help me, I swear I will come to your house and nail your poodle's tail to the floor. Don't tempt me! Freshly ground pepper and some freshly ground nutmeg. Now do not, I repeat, do not use the pre-graded nutmeg in the little jar. I swear to God, leave that to the goddamn breeders. Now, 
with your best serrated knife, simply cut the French bread into two inch pieces, two inches, no more, no less. Get a ruler if you have to, like all gay men, you can't tell an inch from a foot. Now, place the French bread on a baking sheet and drizzle with extra virgin, extra virgin olive oil, which is probably the only virgin thing you've ever laid your slutty hands on. And place it in a low oven for 30 minutes or until brown. Now, on to the fondue. You must take your globe of garlic and rub it into the fondue pot. Now, this may take a few minutes, so try to think of something pleasant. And we're done. Now you can throw away that clove of garlic because it has served its purpose. Much like your hookup from the ramrod last night. Next, you'll want to check the quality of the wine. Remember, never cook with a wine you wouldn't want to drink yourself. Inconclusive. <laughs> That's more like it. Now, you're going to combine all your Gruyere, Emmentaler, spices, wine, and lemon juice into the pot and cook over moderate heat until the cheese is nice and beginning to melt. It's about five minutes. While the cheese is bubbling away and doing its thing, now it's time for a commercial break. Welcome back. It's been five minutes and our fondue is looking silky and creamy as David Cassidy's backside. Yes, I said it. Now, add a generous pinch of pepper and nutmeg and continue to stir until smooth and creamy. About three minutes. Don't overcook your fondue. It'll get stringy, and only a Neanderthal likes a stringy fondue. One time, Susan Sontag came to my house and had the nerve to serve me a stringy fondue. I told her, be gone, wicked witch, or someone will drop a house on you too. We haven't spoken since. <laughs> Judy Garland's tits the croutons! My very special dinner guest tonight is author Myra Willoughby, who has just penned the New York Times bestseller, Speed Yourself Thin. Myra, would you like to tell us something about your book? Of course, Claude. Like so many people, I struggled and tried every fad diet to yeah. lose the weight. Mm -hmm. The grapefruit diet, the pineapple diet, even the Shelly Winters beer and cabbage diet. Nothing keep the pounds off until I created the Black Beauty Diet. I have a hearty breakfast of a Marlboro Light 100, a glass of chilled Zinfandel, and a heaping handful of speed that I get from my dealer, Marco. Sounds sensible. Now, crazy lady, what did you have for lunch? Well, by the time I stop violently shaking, I'm ready for a handful of downers and bed. Would you like to try the fondue? Mm, looks stringy. You bitch! A 
Uh, that's about all the time we have tonight. I hope you enjoyed this tasty slice of queer TV history. And as my mother would say, would it hurt you to hit the subscribe button? <laughs> well, she would actually say, Dicky, would it kill you to pick up your room for once? It smells like a roll of Derby Queen's in here. <laughs> Oh, Mom was a hot ticket, <laughs> that's for sure. <sighs> Always please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because it's the right thing to do. And until next time, my little custard tarts, <laughs> stay fabulous. Coming up next on Pansy Vision TV, it's Ask the Manager where we read your highly offensive thirst trap letters to our Silver Fox General Manager, Fred Kellogg. Then it's the Dick Marlboro Thanksgiving Special with Dick's special guests, Tony Randall, Agnes Moorhead, and Rhode Island disco cover band, the CBBGs.